Hello, this is Mr. McGovern, and this is the third video in the Momentum and Impulse series where we're going to look at using our Momentum bar charts to do calculations. So last time in video two, we were able to draw our Momentum bar charts, and from that, all we're going to do is add in the equation for Momentum, which is P, P is the symbol for Momentum, equals mass times velocity to find any unknowns that we need to. So we're going to use the same example from um, video two. And so if you haven't watched that, you need to go back and, and watch it so you can see how we got the momentum bar charts. But as a quick recap, we have a, a little toy train set and an unloaded cart hits a loaded cart. And then they stick together and move off at some unknown velocity. We had to find our positive direction that helps us um, work out what's positive and negative in our momentum bar charts. So after all the work we did in video two, we had something that looked like this. We had the empty... Um, carriage to start with had three momentum units and then um, we know that through conservation momentum which is the idea that the total momentum before equals the total momentum afterwards our coupled carriages had to have three momentums as well and so we came up with this equation that the p momentum the momentum of the empty one plus the momentum of the loaded one has to equal the momentum of them coupled together but if you look at that diagram on the left you see the loaded one has no momentum units has no momentum, so I can simplify this equation just to the P momentum of the empty one equals momentum of the coupled. Now I'm going to add in a calculation, and to do that all we just have to remember is that momentum, ah, sorry, the calculation I want to do is to find this velocity of the combined carriages, what I don't yet know, and there's a question mark in the diagram there. So, and to do that of course we need to know that momentum which is the symbol P, is equal to mass times velocity. So I'm just going to rewrite this equation I found using my momentum bar chart, so P empty equals P coupled, and I'm going to put in there, for each P, for each momentum, I'm going to change it for mass times velocity. So where I had P, or momentum of the empty, I have now have mass of the empty times velocity of the empty, and that equals mass of the combined times the velocity of the combined. Now with these labels in here, the little empties and the little combines, it does look a little bit um, cluttered, but because we have multiple masses in this equation, there's a mass and an empty or the mass combined, and we have different velocities, you've really got to label them. So subscripts in physics are the little labels down the bottom um, to help us distinguish which one's which. So all I've done is I've taken my equation from my bar charts and substituted where it said momentum, which is P for mass times velocity for each one. Now I know the mass of the empty one, I know the velocity of the empty one, it's 1 and 3. I know the combined mass, it's 4. I don't know the combined velocity, but now I've just got 1 times 3 equals 4 times V. I divide both sides by 4, and so I get 3 over 4, and 3 over 4 is 0.75, and that's my combined velocity. So once you've got the bar chart done, uh, the, the calculation is usually pretty straightforward. The physics and the important physics is being able to set it all up so you can get this equation right to start with before you even do any maths with it. 